We recently got off our first Norwegian cruise after having only sailed Carnival. The question is, will we sail on Norwegian again? Ahoy travelers, it's Amy with Cruising from the Ozarks here with another video designed to help you make your vacation a success. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It only takes a second and doing so helps other cruisers like you find us. So part one ended with Carnival ahead by one point. Let's bring that ticker back up again and see who's ahead at the end of this video. Before we start awarding some points, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're a new channel. It could really use your support to help us reach more cruisers like you. Like, subscribe, and share. It really helps our channel out with YouTube algorithms. And make sure you also click that notification bell so that you don't miss any future posts. One of our favorite areas on a ship is usually the adults only open air section. On Carnival, this is called Serenity, and on Norwegian, it's called Spice H2O. Norwegian also has Vibe, but that's an extra cost that we chose not to make due to our itinerary being port intensive with only two sea days. Both Serenity and Spice are located above the Lido deck, but that's where the similarities seem to end. On the Carnival ships that I've been on, Serenity wraps around the top deck, quite a bit of it. And there's a bar there with bar waiters that will go around the area to check to see if anyone needs a drink, which is great. Because if you're there by yourself and you want to make sure you don't lose your spot, it's nice to have someone coming and taking your order and then bringing your drink to you. Let's be honest, it's nice to have someone do that, even if there's two people sitting there. And there's some great seating on Serenity. There's regular loungers, ones with cushions, some that are similar to couches and they're grouped into seating areas, as well as the coveted clamshells. On Norwegian, or at least on the breakaway, the only seating in Spice was either regular loungers and a few chairs that weren't really these nice comfy chairs. They reserved the clamshells and those cushion loungers for vibe. There is a bar in Spice HTO just like there is in Serenity, but we only ever had a bar waiter come around one time and ask us if we needed a drink. It's also important to know that Spice is a very small area with half of it designated for smoking. On the breakaway, the bar was non-smoking, but the whole area around it was smoking, which kind of seemed odd because then the bar you couldn't actually sit there and smoke at the bar, but the smoke was all around the bar and you could smell it. Every time you went to go to drink, you were you had to walk through smoke. There were two hot tubs and a small pool area, but it's basically just designed to sit in or near. There's no swimming. It's important to know that the spice area is only adults only until 7 p.m. And then they actually use that for other events. And the only time we spent any time there was when they showed a movie, but that was very disappointing. More on that later. Point to Carnival. One thing that my mother commented on several times was how easy it was to get on an elevator on the breakaway. And I agree. There just seemed to be more elevators. And I don't know if it's actually true. And I wouldn't be able to compare all Norwegian ships against all Carnival ships. But even at the busiest of times, you wouldn't have to wait for more than a few minutes for an elevator. That was so nice. So point to Norwegian for that. Since we like to get the drinks package, bar service is something we notice when on board a ship. Sometimes I've chosen to spend most of my time at just one bar, and other times I've spread my time more evenly amongst various bars, depending on what events may be going on at the bars or if I just feel like trying something new. We tried out most of the bars on the breakaway and the drinks were fine, but they could really use more bartenders. The wait was sometimes way too long. Now, normally I wouldn't care. You're on vacation, just relax. But when you arrive 30 minutes prior to dinner for a pre-dinner drink, and then you have to leave before you're even waited on, now that can be an issue. It's hard to determine if this is normal for the breakaway, is it normal for Norwegian ships, or is this just still due to cruise shortage since the shutdown? The atrium was always swarming with people, but as I mentioned in part one, they had activities scheduled in the atrium that just brought in more people than the area could comfortably hold. 
and that included the bar. The bartenders at Shakers seemed to have somewhat of a higher skill level. The bartenders were impressive and the drinks seemed fancier. Although it was martinis only, so maybe they could afford to spend some more time and be a little bit fancier because they were just doing martinis. But anyway, at any time we were at Shakers, there was only two bartenders and one waiter. And the waiter didn't get you your drinks like they did in other venues. He was just cleaning up the empty glasses. It wasn't enough for the amount of people waiting. And it's a small area, at least on the breakaway. Shakers was really small. There wasn't a lot of seating there. And people were often waiting around to try to get a seat. But for what there was, it still wasn't enough bartenders or a bar waiter. I've yet to be back on Carnival since the shutdown. So I can't really speak to the service now, but previously I would say that it seemed faster than Norwegian. One thing Carnival has that Norwegian doesn't is a bar full of mixologists. If you haven't been to the Alchemy Bar on a Carnival ship, you won't know what I'm talking about. The best drinks I have ever had came from the Alchemy Bars. Those guys and gals are geniuses. My recommendation? Give them an idea of what you like and don't like and just let them do their magic instead of ordering from the bar menu. You won't be disappointed. For me, I give them two things that I don't want in my drink. I don't want banana and I don't want chocolate. I'm not really a fan of chocolate liquor and unless the banana is just a very small part of the drink, it becomes overwhelming and I just don't care for it. Banana is just not my favorite flavor. I told them those two things and I said, just make whatever you wanted. And I had some of the best drinks of my entire life. And I think they had fun getting to just make stuff up. Like I said, these people are talented mixologists. They're not just used to having to stick to popular drinks and a small menu created for that bar. My mother pointed out something I forgot to mention in the last video when it comes to comparing the drink packages, but I actually think it fits even better here when you order a drink on Carnival, unless things have changed recently, you are given a receipt that you have to sign. This is annoying for everyone involved. The bar staff have to print out and make sure that they have enough pins so the guests can sign these receipts. They have to make sure you actually sign the receipt. And sometimes it'll get wet if the bar is wet from spilt drinks and it hasn't been time to been wiped down, which of course makes it hard to sign. Plus, they have a place to add a tip on the receipt, which can make you feel obligated to do so, even though you've already paid an 18% gratuity on that drink. There's no signing anything when ordering a drink from a bar on Norwegian, which is definitely a positive. The amount of bars available seem to be about the same when you take in the bar to cruiser ratio. So who gets my point for best bars? It's a close one, but service plus the superior alchemy bar just pushes carnival ahead to the front. Point to carnival. If you frequent the bars, you will be using a lot of straws. We all know the push towards biodegradable straws to protect our oceans. Although at this point, I think masks have overtaken when it comes to objects found in our oceans. But either way, I think it's admirable that cruise lines want to help cut down on any ocean pollution. But they also need to make sure that the straws that they choose will actually hold up longer than 10 minutes. The last time I was on a carnival ship, they were handing out sugar straws. And from the photos that I found on the internet, it looks like they still are. Those things are terrible. I honestly think I'd rather use a paper straw. And let's be honest, paper straws are useless. The sugar straws taste terrible and begin to dissolve quickly. Their taste reminds me of those sticks in the Fun Dip candy. It just, it's terrible. I end up just taking my own portable straw and use it instead. Norwegian has upped their biodegradable straw game. They look and feel just like a regular plastic straw except for the color. I found ones that look similar online that they say are made out of agave, but I'm not sure if that's what Norwegian is using. Either way, they don't dissolve, they don't taste bad, they don't have a taste at all. They just have a weird color to them. And this may all sound like a petty thing to even notice, like it's petty to even notice that the these straws. 
And if you're at the martini bar, it doesn't matter. You're not getting straws. But when you are ordering a lot of cocktails, straws do make a difference. I shouldn't have to bring my own straw that I have to carry around, store, and clean and rinse just to have a straw that isn't gross. Point to Norwegian. Part two ends with Carnival Ahead by one point yet again. If you missed part one, check it out here. I have one more video planned in this series, so be sure to be on the lookout for it and come back next week for another video designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.